This is a tutorial on properties of definite integrals. So let's just go through these. The first thing you need to think about when dealing with definite integrals is it's nothing more than just area under a curve. So if we take, if we have from A and we'll have B over here. So this first integral says find the area under the curve from A to A. So if we have from A to A, we have an infinitely thin rectangle. Sorry, we have a rectangle of area zero. We have a height of f of x, so the height here is whatever f of a is, and then with the width is zero, so f of a times zero is zero, so that one's like this. If we have a situation in where a to b is equal to a constant. So the function is a constant. So we don't have this function anymore. I'll just move it up. But we have another function that is that is just a constant. So we can have something like this. Well then that is a perfect rectangle, the one just like you're used to. And we have C. So this is C here. So the height is C and the width is B minus A. So the area is B minus A times C. On the next one, we have um, the integral of C F of X. We can just take the integral of C times F of X, or we can just uh, move the C out, out in front. So you take the integral of F of X and you multiply it by C. Um, that one doesn't need too much of a picture. And then um, this one says the integral from A to B is the same as, the, plus the integral from B to C is the same as the integral from A to C. So if we stick out a C here, we have the integral from A to B and then B to C. That of course is the, we just add the areas and we'll get the integral from A to C. It's the same thing. So we can split them up as well. And then if we have this, f of x plus a constant. So we take f of x is this curve here. And then let's say we add, let's say we add three to it. So we shift the whole thing up three. So here's f of x. And then we shift it up three. One, two, three, like this. The old area of f of x is right here, used to be. So the old area is f of x right here, and then we shifted it up three. So instead of just adding three to the area, well, we're actually adding a big, big rectangle, which is three times the width, which is the same as this piece over here. So as soon as you shift a function up, you're adding a rectangle underneath with, with area. And then this one, the last one here, um, So um, the integral from a to b of f of x is the opposite, the negative, of b to a. So this is a little bit confusing because you're, we're thinking about negative area now. And the way I, I like to think about it is this is a positive and this is a positive. So I'm adding a positive rectangle when I take the area of this, of these, of this rectangle here. Um, but if I have a positive y value times, and I'm going in that direction from b to a, where b is bigger than a, then that's positive height and negative width. And you can say that that's the exact opposite, basically. That's, that's negative. Okay, so those are your um, properties. So let's do an example. The area from 0 to 7, so we have an area from 0 to 5, so I'll just uh, maneuver this over here, something like that, and finish this off. So from 0 to 5 is 10, and from 5 to 7 is 3, so it should look something like this. From five to seven is three. 
and that's zero. So from zero to seven, from zero to seven should be 13. From zero to, from five to zero should be negative 10, so it's the opposite. From five to five, that's a no area there. And then three times f of x from zero to five, but that's the same as three, bring the three out in front, zero to five of f of x dx. And then this is um, 0 to 5 is 10. So this is 3 times 10, which is 30. And the next one, we have a function that is has an area of 0 from negative 1 to 1. Well, there's only a few ways we can draw this. So we, let's say it's something like this. It's sort of like maybe like a sine curve. So this area is positive, and this area is negative. So you remember my, when I said a few minutes ago, this is negative height and positive, um, we're going from negative 1 to 0, or negative 1 to 1. So that's posit positive width and negative height, which gives it me negative area. Okay, so something like that. So this is negative 1, and this is 1. So from negative 1 to 0, well, if 0 to 1 is 5, and negative 1 to 1 is 0, then that must be negative 5. So this is negative 5. 0 to 1, which is 5, minus negative 1 to 0. So minus negative 5 is 10. This is 3 times f, the integral of negative 1 to 1 of f of x, put it out in front, and then negative 1 to 1 is 0, so it's 3 times 0. 3 times 0, which is 0. And then 3 times f of x from 0 to 1, so 3 f of x, 0 to 1 of dx is 3 times uh, 0 to 1 is 5, so that's 15. And then one more slide. So consider the function f that is continuous on the interval of negative 5 to 5. So we'll say this is negative 5, and this is 5. The area from 0 to 5 is 4. So let's maybe make a picture like, um, just like we had before, I guess. Something like that. So this is 4. Okay, so if I shift the whole graph up to, so check this out. So if I shift this whole graph up to, no, not that, um, shift the whole graph up to 1, 2, like this, I have this area, which is 4. And then I have a rectangle underneath, shoot, a rectangle underneath. So this rectangle has a height of 2 and a width of 5, so that's 10. So we should have 4 plus 10, which is 14. Okay, so then what we're talking about on this next one, oops, 4 plus 10 is 14. So on the next one, it says to sh the, the interval is now from negative 2, so negative 2 to 3. Negative 2 to 3. So this function, which was right there, is now moved is now moved over here. Okay, and it's the exact same area. We're talking about area here. It looked like that, so now we have, it should still be four. Do you notice that the interval is still five wide? It's all shifted to the uh, right two, sorry, to the left two, and so did the intervals, so it's the same thing. All right, so now this next one is a little bit confusing if you don't know what, um, 
what some of these terms mean. Uh, so an even function, an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. So we can draw it like this. So when I plug in 2, I get the same thing if I plugged in negative 2. That's what an even function is. Evens, uh, I think it probably gets its name from like x squared. It's, it sort of looks like x squared or maybe x to the fourth. And when you plug in a positive and a negative, it, you get the same value. Okay, so if it's even, so it's perfectly symmetric on the y-axis here. So this is 4, and then that would, of course, would also be 4. So then this would be 8. If it's odd, odds come from like maybe the cubic function, which means it went like that, the exact same graph. When I plug in 2, I get the same y value, but negative or but opposite. So when I plug in 2 and I get maybe 8, I plug in negative 2 and I get negative 8. That's what that means. So if that's 4, then that one must be negative 4, which would be 0. And there's your tutorial on properties of definite integrals.